I've been asked uh, several times this year how 2009 has compared with 1992. And um, I would say that we were that close to a 1992. September really was what saved us. Uh, but yet at the same time, we're seeing uh, some very, very poor grain quality, high moisture uh, grain. And again, it goes back to when frost came, when planting date came, um, or when we, when we planted the crop. Very, very small differences in a day or two made a huge difference in terms of the overall outcome, in terms of grain quality. Here you see um, a hybrid that has Again, it was nipped by the frost. You see that you don't have complete milk line. Uh, a lot of milky starch um, or mil milky sugars here in the kernel and that resulted in very, very poor test weight. I know the Sanilac County growers uh, suffered that as, with, as did most of uh, Michigan growers north of uh, uh, you know, 46. Uh, poor, poor test weights, uh, somewhere in the 40, high 40s, low 50s, high moisture. Um, the thing that we're not seeing too is with a little frustrating. We're not seeing as the grain dries down, um, or as I'm drying the grain, we're not seeing a, a big increase in test weight. If I can let it dry in the field, I'll get a little bit of an increase in test weight, not a lot. Um, our test weights are really poor this year, however, and, and it goes back to uh, maturity, it goes back to planting date. Uh, we were quite wet when we planted. We ended up seeing uh, some poor planting conditions and again that resulted in a slower growing crop. Um, so that's kind of a wrap up of the year. This is uh, 36V53, one of my favorite hybrids. Uh, 36V53, Pioneer 36V53, about 101, 102 day hybrid. Uh, very high yielding, really um, uh, ex exceptionally well under droughtier soils. Um, we've got a, s a number of situations in the last couple of years that we've, we've watched this hybrid where really intense drought, this thing remains consistent, solid performer. Um, as I say, it's a very high yielder, very good agronomics, really, really strong, what we would call our stress emergence, comes out of the ground strong establishes a stand. This is a, a top pick in my mid-Michigan uh, hybrid package. Uh, one of the issues a lot of growers are facing uh, in Michigan this year, uh, we've had a very cool year, but the other factor is we've had a very wet year. And it's created a lot of variability in ear size. And I just wanted to point out a couple things that we're seeing. We saw a lot of nitrogen deficiency uh, moving up the plant quite a ways uh, this past year. And, and this is what happens when the plant starts to lose nitrogen. Uh, you notice this, this ear is fairly well filled. Um, it, it's filled pretty much to the tip. You always, at high populations, you'll get a little bit of a nose. But um, this year, because of the, the amount of nitrogen we've lost, uh, we're seeing a lot of this, what we would say, kernel tip abortion. Um, and you can see that these are actually pollinated, so it's not a factor of pollination. It's a factor that the plant didn't have enough nutrient, and most likely it's nitrogen that has caused the uh, loss in uh, uh, kernels here at the tip of the year. And that's usually, these are the ones that the kernel, the, the plant typically will slough off as a result of not having enough nutrient to uh, uh, maintain itself. We're standing again between two products. The first one I'd like to talk about is the 37Y14. Very solid performer. This product has outstanding drought tolerance. Um, I, I recommend this product to go across a lot of soil, different types of soils, especially variable soils, sandier soils. Uh, it's high yield under your uh, heavier soils as well. So this is a real solid product. It carries both the Herculex 1 and the Herculex RW, so it protects against rootworm. Uh, and it also protects against corn borer and western bean cutworm. Western bean cutworm are coast to coast in Michigan now, uh, all the way from the west coast to the east coast. Uh, we've had quite a, uh, a moth catch this past uh, summer. Over on this side, I have the new uh, product. This is P0125. 
HR. This is a Herculex 1 product. I'm very excited about this product. A very high yielding. Uh, last year in our, as an experimental product it, it did wonderful. This year some of the early data shows that it's very high yielding. Uh, it will, I think, out yield the 37Y14 by quite a bit. It carries a little more moisture, however, than the Y14. So these two will make a very, very good package together. High yield also has the com uh, capacity to be a really good early silage hybrid, the P0125HR. One of the ways to identify different hybrids, if you're in a plot and you're uncertain about whether I'm harvesting, whether or not the stakes are correct, one of the ways you can always check to see whether you're in the right product, first thing I look at is I break open the uh, ear and I look at the cob color. You've got a nice pink cob here. Um, pink is relatively unusual. There's not a lot of pink cobs. This is P0125HR, which does have the pink cob. Notice, too, it's got a lot of the uh, uh, red coloration in the kernel. This is uh, what we would call kernel red streak. Um, it, it's not uh, any anything related to mold or anything, uh, but this is also a factor that it helps you identify a hybrid.